Madam Special Rapporteur, co-chairs and esteemed members of the panel, colleagues and friends. Portugal is pleased to co-sponsor this event because we believe there is a clear human rights perspective to, on non-communicable diseases. And I think we are all grateful to the Office of the High Commissioner and specifically to the Thematic Engagement Special Procedures and Right to Development Division for having prepared a remarkable concept note. I, I will quote it liberally. As we know, the right to health is recognized in several instruments, including the, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, as well as in various regional human rights instruments. On the Human Rights Council, re resolutions on the right of everyone to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health, like the one that established the mandate of the Special Rapporteur back in 2002, have also touched on this subject. According to the most recent report of, the, of WGO, Invisible Numbers, the true extent of non-communicable diseases and what to do about them, in every two seconds, one person under the age of 70 dies of an S. CD. 82% of those deaths take place in low and middle income countries. NCDs, which include cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, and chronic respiratory disease, are collectively responsible for almost 70% of all deaths worldwide, making them the leading cause of global mortality and disability. Major risk factors that lead to NCDs are tobacco use, and healthy diet, harmful use of alcohol, physical inactivity and air pollution. Eliminating these factors could prevent or delay millions of premature deaths. As also indicated in the WGO report, NCDs are in an enormous drain on global and national economies. According to some estimates, they will cost 30 trillion US dollars in the years 2011 to 2030. The COVID-19 pandemic saw the deprioritization of many public health initiatives and essential health services, including for NCDs and mental health, even though NCDs and their risk factors were shown to increase susceptibility to COVID-19 infections. In 2022, only a handful of countries were on track to meet the SDG target on reducing early deaths from NCDs by a third by 2030. One thing the WHO report clearly emphasizes is that spending an additional $18 billion per year across low and middle income countries could result in benefits worth trillions of dollars, proving that health should be seen as an investment, not as a cost. The prevalence of NCDs is closely associated with socioeconomic, environmental and other determinants. These include exposure to risk factors and mental health conditions, poverty, discriminatory laws and policies, early childhood health and poor occupational and environmental conditions. The Special Rapporteur on the Right to Health here with us has addressed the issue of NCDs in a statement in July 2020, which highlighted how unhealthy diets have a direct impact on overweight and obesity, and therefore are key contributing factors to NCDs and to their related premature morbidity and, and to mortality in all regions. She also noted that having the right to health in mind, states should regulate the activities of the food and beverage industry, which are increasingly implicated in the global obesity and NCDs epidemic in order to mitigate the detrimental impact of the products on the enjoyment of the right to health and other rights. In conclusion, Without clear efforts to promote action on the prevention of NCDs, they will remain on the margins of global health action. We cannot remain passive in the face of NCDs, and in Geneva, we have the responsibility to break silos and be an instrument of further dialogue and coordinated actions, namely between the Human Rights Council and the WGO. This panel is a great step in this direction. I wish you a very successful discussion. Thank you very much.